we've got two questions related to what you have to do when you have to limit the solar output to the grid because it can't handle too much solar. We've got a question here from Mia in Adelaide. Hi, SQ team. The ABC reported that 12,000 residential solar systems in SA were shut down on March the 14th. I was under the impression that only systems installed after October 2020 in SA could be remotely shut down. But my system was shut down for 40 minutes that day and that was installed in 2019. How did SA Power Networks have the ability to do this? Two, I have a Tesla battery which disconnects from the grid to continue running in the event of a blackout. Why didn't this kick in during the remote shutdown? So some background, here in SA in October 2020, the rules were changed so you had to have remote shutdown capability on all solar systems installed after that date. But Mears was installed in 2019 and it still shut down. So what happened? Well, I can tell you what happened. SA Power Networks, our local DNSP, distributed network service provider, decided they needed to shut down more solar systems than they could with the special remote shutdown thing. So they went to a bunch of substations and they ramped up the voltage. Now, Australian standard AS4777.2 says if the voltage gets too high, all inverters have to shut off. So if you were on one of those substations, which you obviously were, your inverter had to shut off when it saw the high voltage, whether you've got remote shutdown installed or not. Sadly, your Tesla Powerwall 2 also has a battery inverter in there and that has to follow the same rules. So your solar system shut down and your battery shut down. So that beautiful battery you bought to give you electricity in the event of a blackout didn't give you any electricity. Yep, it sucks. Look, I think this is a really horrible way to shut down people's solar systems, but the reality is for a year or two, we're probably gonna have to do this very occasionally until we sort out a better technical solution for all the legacy solar systems. Second question is from Russ, again in South Australia. Now this is a really long question, but what Russ is asking, when you need to limit the power from your solar panels, where does all the excess power go? And more importantly, will it damage anything or the electrics in his house? Well, the good news is the power just isn't generated. The way inverters work is they work on a thing called a maximum power point. Now you can see on this graph here that the inverter tries really hard to stick the dot, the maximum power point at the top of the curve. If you wanna produce less power from a solar panel, you detune it. So the MPPT, the maximum power point tracker, simply reduces the voltage or the current to a point where the panel's really inefficient. So you just don't generate that power. There's no excess power to put anywhere. It's totally safe. So that's how inverters throttle the power output of solar panels. They detune the maximum power point. Solar nerd goals. Our third question comes in from B Delight. B says, big solar is the best thing since sliced bread. But my question is, what was the best thing before sliced bread? Well, I've done a lot of research and I found the answer to your question. It's bread.